How are you doing, Cali Crowd? I want to start this video by saying that I am not a physio. There, now I've made it extremely clear. I think even if I was a physio, it would be extremely disingenuous of me to diagnose and think I could remedy an issue over YouTube as any physio would need to see you and observe you moving if they were to prescribe anything to your individual specific needs. That being said, there are definitely things that we can do to train intelligently and ensure that we minimize the risk of injury. And when it comes to the LSIT, there is something that I've seen time and time and again that has led me to make this video to walk through two tips that will save you a world of pain. Since documenting my LSIT progress diary showcasing how I myself went from zero to full floor LSIT, one question that has come up repeatedly is that people are experiencing pain in their elbows when they attempt to do it, especially when it comes to the floor LSIT. Now this question got sent to me so often that I decided to ask for videos, videos of examples of people trying to do the LSIT and the people that were experiencing this elbow pain. And what I saw was this commonality, something that was happening again and again and again, that spoke to something that I believe is highly preventable. Tell me if you can spot the difference from these two LSITs shot from the back. Have you guessed what it is yet? Take a closer look at my hand placement. My hands in the image on the right are slightly further away from my central body line than my hands in the image on the left. Now, why is this important? Well, the reason calisthenics is so impressive is because we are deliberately putting our bodies in mechanically disadvantageous positions and performing skills despite this fact. But these skills are hard enough without us making them harder, which is what is happening here for two reasons. First, Having our arms wider apart lengthens the lever arm for this movement. It's why doing a push-up like this is far easier than doing a push-up like this with the hands wider apart. It doesn't mean that it can't be done or this is an incorrect way to move, but making a hard movement harder demands more strength on your body and if your body isn't ready to deliver on those demands, you increase the risk of injury. The second reason we're making the LSIT harder by having our hands further away from our central body line and therefore increasing the likelihood of pain in the elbows is because pain in joints is usually a product of larger muscles being lazy and smaller muscles having to pick up the slack. The issue with this is that the larger muscle in question might not be anywhere near the source of pain which makes it harder to diagnose and really dig into what might be going on. In this case, the two muscle groups we're dealing with are the triceps which are overworking, and the lats, which are likely underworking. The ELSA is a shoulder dominant exercise and requires that we retract and depress the scapula in order to lift our butt cheeks off the floor. The lats are one of the muscles responsible for this scapular depression, and they're one of the largest muscles in the body and so capable of producing large amounts of force. The problem is that our bodies are naturally efficient, another word for lazy, and when we're learning new movement patterns, our bodies will default to the path of least resistance. When we L-sit and press down with our hands further apart, the force is primarily coming from the triceps, which amongst other things are responsible for elbow extension. So getting those arms straight and locked out. For most people, lifting your body off the ground in this way is too big of a job for the triceps to pick up. But if we keep pushing them, they will default to their major role in that position, which is extension of the arm, extension of the elbow. But in this case, we're hyper extending the elbow into a position that might not be beneficial for you long term. But then the question becomes, how do we get the lats more involved. But before I answer that question, I want you to try this experiment with me. You can do it right now while you watch this video. You don't have to move. Lift one of your arms so that they're perpendicular to your body like this. Grab your lats, so this meaty piece at the back of your armpit. Now, push your hand away from you as hard as you can. Now, what you'll probably notice is that your triceps and your delts fire up, but your lats, they're still asleep. Now, try this again, so grab your lats again, but this time squeeze your arm by your side, as if you'd put a 50 pound note under your armpit and somebody was trying to take it away from you. Now, with the arm by your side, push down as hard as you can. Feel the difference on your lats? Your triceps and your delts will still flare up here, but now they have the backing of the much larger lats. Translating this to the L-sit, we want to squeeze our arms by our side when we're doing this exercise. 
I always use that cue of having a 50 pound note between my armpit and trying to keep it being taken from me. A lot of people do the L sit on parallel bars at gyms or at parks, which are generally a lot wider than I would like or recommend. So it therefore doesn't surprise me that this is such a prevalent issue. Just another reason why you should learn to L sit on the floor so that you can fully dictate how you perform it. Now that we know how to activate the lats, it still doesn't mean that we can do it in a straight up L sit straight away. The L sit is still a pretty difficult movement pattern, but the way that we can develop this strength is very similar to the test that we just did on how to activate the lats. I've done a full video on this. If you really want to get deeper into this, then definitely click on the card. But in a nutshell, what we want to get used to is pressing down in an L sit position while keeping our arms locked and glued to our side. Over time, our body will get used to activating our lats in that position and should therefore make the L sit a lot more feasible for you to do. Again, I will stress, if you are already experiencing pain, definitely steer away from it and go and see a physio. Remember, as it could be very serious and you always wanna get an expert's opinion. So somebody who's going to sit there watch you move and diagnose you based on you, you, not, not a broad generalization, you. We, and when I say we, I mean collectively, need to do better at steering people away from the no pain, no gain dogma that is so prevalent in social media fitness. But crowd, that's it for today. If you like this video, then definitely give it a thumbs up. If you want to join the Cali to the Crowd family and join the motivating and inspiring community that we're building here, then smash that subscribe button and ring the bell as well so that you never miss out on a Cali to the Crowd video. If you know somebody that has had this elbow complaint or if they're learning how to do the L sit full stop, then definitely share this video with them. Save a friend. Their elbows need you. And guys, I will see you in the next video.